FHA loans often get a really bad rap. In fact, if I say the word FHA, it usually elicits one of two reactions. Either people love it or they absolutely hate it. And in today's video, I want to spend a little bit of time and actually talk about what FHA is and what it's not. I personally believe that over the next couple of years, the FHA loan is going to be one of the more popular loans out there due to housing affordability issues with higher interest rates, with higher house prices. FHA allows higher debt to income ratios. It allows lower down payments, in addition to many other things which we're gonna talk about in today's video. Now I wanna start by talking about a couple of things that FHA is not. FHA is not a first time home buyer program. It often gets referenced as a first time home buyer program because it allows a lower down payment. It allows lower credit scores. Therefore, people often reference it as a first time home buyer program when in fact, you can be a buyer that has bought multiple properties. You could have owned 50 homes and still use an FHA loan. On top of that, FHA is not for low credit score borrowers. It is for all borrowers out there. It allows as low as a 500 credit score with a 10% down payment up to a 579 credit score. It also allows a 3.5% down payment if you have a 580 credit score or better. But with that said, it's not just for those with lower credit. You can have a 700 credit score, a 750 credit score, and still use FHA. In fact, I believe there's going to be a lot more people with higher credit scores using FHA because of the new loan level price adjustments with conventional financing. In fact, if you have lower than a 680 credit score, there's a really good chance you're going to be using FHA financing because it's far less expensive than conventional financing. And we're gonna talk about this in a little bit more detail later in the video, how to compare loans, how to decide which loan you should do. But I wanted to start very early in the video and let you know that FHA is not a bad loan. So people out there telling you FHA is bad, FHA is what caused the last housing crash, those people are wrong. What caused the last housing crash was adjustable rate mortgages in addition to liar loans out there, people putting no money down, lying about their job, lying about their assets, and having adjustable rate loans that adjusted that were only fixed for a short period of time and ended up adjusting at a time when house prices were softening. Those people ended up owing more on those homes than they were worth and they weren't in a position to refinance. Therefore, many of those people ended up upside down, not able to pay the new payment with the adjustable rate mortgage, and that's essentially what led to bigger issues causing a housing debacle, if you will. So if you've been thinking, I might wanna think about FHA, but I'm not real sure because I've heard all of these things, put all of those things aside. Make sure when you're talking to a lender and you're going through the pre-approval process, that lender should be giving you options. They should be giving you options on FHA loans, they should be giving you options on conventional loans, and you should be able to put them side by side, compare the two, and decide which loan is right for you. Now, with that said, if you don't have a lender to have that conversation with, you want to talk to someone and go through the pre-approval process, I've put a link in the description below of somebody I know, like, and trust that can guide you through that process. With that said, FHA is not always the answer. There's often times where people think they should be going FHA for one reason or another, and conventional financing ends up being the best option for them. So just make sure, again, when you're having that conversation, you're able to compare both loans side by side so that you can decide which loan is right for you. Now, just because you have the down payment that FHA requires, you have the credit score, the credit score requirement that FHA requires doesn't mean that FHA is going to approve you. It doesn't mean that FHA is the answer. Like Now, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm gonna get to that in just a minute after I ask a favor, if you find any value in my videos at all, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. Not only does it help the YouTube algorithm, it shows me that you support my videos. So with that said, hit the subscribe button as well to stay updated on everything FHA and real estate related. Now, a moment ago, I mentioned just because you have the down payment and the credit scores doesn't mean you're going to be approved. Now, I said earlier in the video, 
FHA allows credit scores as low as 500 with a 10% down payment. They also allow credit scores as low as a 580 with 3.5% down. Now, often people think, well, I have the 3.5% down, my credit score is 580, that must mean I meet the requirements, I'm approved. In fact, that couldn't be further from the truth. There are additional requirements that you need to meet in order to be eligible for an FHA loan or any loan for that matter. There are typically debt to income requirements as well as employment and asset requirements on top of several other things which I'll reference at the end of this video. Now, there are a couple of other things I wanna talk about with FHA that often get thrown in as to why FHA is a bad loan. One is often said that FHA requires additional inspections and that's simply not true. FHA doesn't require any additional inspections. They don't require a home inspection. They don't require a termite inspection. They don't require any of these things. Now, as a real estate agent, those are things that you absolutely should get if you're buying a home, but they're not required by FHA. They're just things that you should be doing on your own to make sure you're buying a house that doesn't need a ton of work. That said, FHA appraisers can be a little bit more strict when appraising the property because properties can't have chipping paint on top of the property needs to have a stove it needs to have a working furnace in the property to be able to provide heat to the property those are requirements in the home along with things like running water and when the appraiser is there they're going to check those things so if you're looking to buy a property that needs a ton of work you know almost like a complete remodel then the standard fha loan might not be right for you but fha has another loan it's called the fha 203k which allows you to rehab a property now the process with that loan is a little bit different than your standard fha loan so just because the property needs some work doesn't mean that you can't do it with fha it just means that it's going to be a different process. Now, another thing I'm often hearing is that FHA loans take longer to close. Simply not true. FHA loans shouldn't take any longer than a conventional loan in most cases. In fact, with the last couple of FHA loans that we've done, we've been able to shorten the time frames from the typical 30 days and close a little bit sooner than we would have otherwise. Now, there's two things with FHA that I think are really important, and I want to stress these when I talk about them. The first one is FHA does allow you to buy multiple units, three to four units, with just a 3.5% down payment. Now here's the thing, there's a lot of videos out there on the internet talking about house hacking, buying a three to four unit property, just putting a minimal down payment, renting all the units out, and essentially letting that pay for your mortgage. And in theory, yes, FHA does allow that, but here's the thing that no one is talking about. It often doesn't work in high price markets like my market here in Southern California because FHA requires something called a self-sufficiency test, which essentially makes it impossible to do these three to four unit properties with an FHA putting a minimal down payment. So if you are considering buying a three to four unit property and you're talking about using a minimal down payment, talking about FHA, just make sure you're having a further conversation with your mortgage professional. Again, I put a link earlier in the video that you can talk to someone about this before going out there and thinking it's going to be an easy road to finance one of these properties because it can often be very, very difficult to find something that works. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about that no one really talks about is that FHA loans typically have much better interest rates than those of conventional financing. In fact, at the time I'm shooting this video, a conventional 30-year fixed is sitting somewhere in the mid 6% range, 6.5%, whereas you can get an FHA loan for somewhere around 5.5%, so almost 1% better using an FHA loan. Now, a lot of people out there are gonna say, well, FHA requires mortgage insurance. Well, here's the thing. Conventional loans also require mortgage insurance when you put less than 20% down. In fact, if you have lower credit scores with conventional financing and you're having to pay for mortgage insurance, your mortgage insurance is likely to be very, very expensive. Whereas with FHA, regardless of your credit score, you pay the same mortgage insurance. So as of today, mortgage insurance with just 3.5% down is sitting at 0.55%. So if you're able to get a 30-year fixed rate at say 5.5%, well, if you add the mortgage insurance to that, we call this the blended rate when you have the mortgage insurance and the interest rate added together, that's going to give you an interest rate just over 6%. 
Well, if you heard me earlier, I said a 30-year fix today is sitting somewhere in the mid sixes. And with that 6.5%, that doesn't include the mortgage insurance that you're going to pay for having less than 20% down. So in that example, FHA is likely going to end up being a better loan with a lower monthly payment. Now, there are some things that FHA requires like upfront mortgage insurance, which can absolutely be a downside and something that you have to consider when comparing the loans. But at the end of the day, I wanna stress that FHA is not a bad loan. If you're out there getting quotes for conventional financing, make sure you're including FHA. If you're out there getting quotes for FHA financing, make sure you're getting quotes for conventional financing as well. That way you can put them side by side and figure out which loan program is right for you. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that there are some additional requirements that FHA has. So instead of making this video any longer, what I thought I would do is reference this video here where I go over it in detail.